At a basic level, a data set consists of a number of columns and rows, which are variables and observations. Some large data sets are not in rows and columns, and these data sets are, consist of unstructured data, but that's not for the topic of this course. Unstructured data are things like object data, audio, video, and so forth. A variable, therefore, represents an attribute or characteristic being observed, such as height or weight. These will be columns of a data set, while an observation represents a collection of those variables, or a record. So collecting 10 questions from an individual respondent would be considered an observation. Individual data points can take a number of forms, but we can break them into two categories, categorical and continuous. Continuous data consists of numerical information, such as height and weight, and where every number between the numbers is meaningful. So for example, consider someone's height, 67 inches, 66.8 inches. Those are all meaningful. And everything between them, 66.84, 68.842, they're all meaningful. Categorical data is information that can be broken down into groups, such as male, female, old, young, high, medium, and low. Different values of categorical data are also known as levels. These are the different categories of a particular column. Categorical data can be broken down into a few groups. We have discrete data, it's data that's countable, number of students in a class, for example, or number of chairs at a table. If we have the number of chairs at a table as an example, 3.2, might not make sense, but one, two, three, four do. Binary data is such that it only has two possible values, zero and one, such as male or female. Nominal data is categorical data where the order doesn't matter, such as red, blue, green, or New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Ordinal data, however, is categorical data where the order matters, such as a rank, a rank in a class. There are a number of different terms for dealing with categorical data, such as we have a flag variable, which will mark data, or, and it creates a dummy variable in essence. What are we using the flags for? We might be using the flag variable to actually be indicative of three certain variables that are turned on at the same time, such as, is this a, a customer with repeat purchases? Right? So we're gonna create these additional variables that will flag a certain state of the customer or flag a certain state of the observation. Binning is to create another variable that will separate a continuous variable into bins. We might do this by saying for a particular observation, it has a certain amount of money as revenue, we'll create a bins column that will determine whether it's in the first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, or fourth quartile. And index fields, which is really not so much categorical, but it's used to identify a particular record. Now, flag variables are designed to mark observations in some manner. They can be part of the data set or created by the analyst separately. And bin variables are usually created by the analyst, but not always. They're variables that separate some continuous data into bins, such as it could be known by quartiles. So some examples of a flag variable might be gender, flag male or female, if it doesn't exist within the data set. Or customer as prospect or customer, that they actually made a purchase or not. That may not be in the data set and is something that was added in after. We might have income for a particular customer, in which case we would actually create a new column called income quartile to identify whether or not this record's income is in the first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, or fourth quartile. And index fields are sequential numbers for a set of observations that represent some unique identifier. Now these are important because if your data set does not have an identifier, and you're trying to identify some problem within your data set for a particular model, uh, you wanna try and figure out which record is causing that problem. And so these index numbers or primary keys as they are known in databases are useful to help identify records that are problematic or records that should be called out for some particular reason. Now, similar to binning continuous data, it is possible to reclassify categorical data especially when the number of categories is large or when no difference is present for each category. And this usually occurs when the data is too granular. The analyst has a data set with a variable containing a state field, which has 50 possible values. You could actually create a new field to reclassify these observations into regions, such as Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, and so forth. Another data set might have a field for the day of week, but we can reclassify this as a weekday or a weekend. Another example, you'll have a survey that's taken which has ages in predefined bins. 
these bins can then be grouped into a new classification called young, middle age, and old, as opposed to 18 to 25, 26 to 30, 31 to 35, and so forth. Now, some data should be considered a candidate for removal. If a variable has no purpose in explaining any variance, this data could be removed. Consider the case when a data set is pulled and it has a day of week variable, but every value is Monday. This variable serves no purpose in explaining any relationship to other variables, and we call this a unary variable. In some cases, a variable might be close to unary. So given a data set where the number of orders to customers is one to one, Generally, a customer makes only one order in their lifetime. However, 5% of the cases, customers may make multiple orders. The analyst may choose to drop the variable as it is close to unary, or split the data set into two and attempt to analyze only those customers with multiple orders separately. So the analyst has a lot of different options in handling this type of data. Now, there are other considerations to remove data, removal of duplicate records. And we want to be clear that the analyst has to make sure that the record is actually a true duplicate before it gets removed. We can also remove observations with missing data. We've got to be careful with the criteria as we discussed in a previous slide. And the other time we may remove variables when we have a variable that is very strongly correlated to something else. But we should understand why it's correlated in the first place. We should have an understanding of that data column. However, including two variables that are highly correlated with each other into a model may cause some problems in the final analysis.